Okay, we're at a very interesting philosophical point right now. The question at hand is, is it true that every fraction, when converted to a decimal, falls into a repeating pattern? The answer turns out to be yes, and we can kind of see why right now. Here's the example six sevenths we had in a previous lesson. So we saw that we start with the number six, we've got all these different numbers for unexploding, with these different remainders which got unexploded. Now, the remainders, the remainders, we've got a remainder of four, we've got a remainder of five, we've got a remainder of one, the remainder of three, the remainder of two, the remainder of six, the remainder of four, the remainder of five. So the remainders start repeating. So as soon as the remainders start repeating, we know we're in a repeating pattern, our answer will repeat as well. So the question is, is it true when I do a fraction problem, converting to a decimal, that I'll get repeating remainders? Now think about the remainders. When I'm dividing by seven, I will never see a remainder of seven, because that would be means there was a group of seven I should have collected. I'll never see a remainder of eight. I'll never see a remainder of nine. In fact, the only remainders I'll ever possibly see when dividing by seven are remainders of either one or two or three or five, four or five or six, not seven, not eight, and so on. I might see a remainder of zero. I didn't happen to this time, but there's only seven possible remainders I could see when dividing by seven. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Grand. So that means, as I do my division process, so there's only a finite number of remainders, and I'm trying to do this process for as long as I can, I must eventually repeat a remainder. In fact, we repeated the six right off the bat. As soon as I repeat a remainder, that means I'm in a cycle, I've got a repeating decimal pattern. Okay, now when we did one quarter, we actually got a repeat remainder of zero. We go 0.25, we figure that out, then had a remainder of zero, which led to a remainder of zero, which led to a remainder of zero. It fell in its own little small cycle. So there was a repeating remainder as well. So even one quarter is a repeating decimal, repeating zeros after a while. Um, when we did one third, it fell into the same remainder right away. Remainder of three, remainder of three, remainder of three. So as it falls re repeat remainder once, it's in a cycle. If I did a number like three thirteenths, now I'm not going to draw it out, but even worse than this one, but we can think our way through it. As I draw three dots and look for groups of 13, I know the remainders I'll possibly see could be zero, or one, or two, or three, or four, five, or six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or twelve, but I would not see a remainder of 13, I would not see a remainder of 14, I would not see a remainder of 15, and so on. There's only a finite number of possible remainders I will get to. So as I play this game, da -da 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 -da, I have to eventually repeat a remainder. I can't keep doing different remainders. There's only 13 possible remainders. I've got to eventually hit the same remainder I had before. And as soon as I hit a repeat remainder, it means I'm in a cycle. We've just proven every fraction, when converted to a decimal, has a repeating pattern. It may be repeating zeros or repeating pattern like this, but every decimal has a, every fraction has a repeating decimal expansion. Whoa, because this is deep. But I'm going to, it's so deep, I'm going to write in words. Every fraction has a repeating, now you get to see my atrocious handwriting, a repeating decimal expansion. All right, could be repeating zeros, like a quarter, or a half, or an eighth, or something, or it could be repeating blocks like this, but it has a repeating decimal expansion. This is deep. Because what it says now, suppose I gave you a decimal that didn't have a repeating decimal expansion, did not have a repeating pattern of any kind, then that means that number cannot be a fraction. Now, people often call fractions rational numbers, like a ratio of two whole numbers. So a number that's not a fraction would be called irrational. And I'm gonna write, for you, write down for you right now an example of an irrational number. We can now prove at this very moment that irrational numbers actually do exist. Here's one, it's point one. Zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, and so on. This number, now it has a pattern, it certainly has a pattern, but you know what this pattern is. You could tell, you could figure out what the millionth digit's gonna be or the two millionth digit's gonna be, so you know what this number actually is, you could figure it out, but it doesn't have a repeating pattern. There's no repeating cycle going on. In which case, this is some number, it's on the number line, it's just bigger than one tenth, cannot be a fraction. It doesn't have a repeating pattern, therefore it's not a fraction. This is our very first example of an irrational number. In fact, this is one thing that drives me kind of crazy as a teacher. A lot of books say that we all know that pi, for example, is an irrational number. The square root of two is an irrational number. We don't actually. Proving those things is hard. Um, some books might prove the square root of two is actually irrational. It doesn't have a repeating decimal, but not pi. Pi was very hard to prove. In fact, it took mathematicians two millennia to figure out how to prove that pi actually was an irrational number. It's not at all straightforward. But what I love about what we've just done now, dots and boxes, we can see 
every fraction that has, must have a repeating decimal expansion. Therefore, any number you write down that does not have a repeating decimal expansion must be an example of a number that's not a fraction. We have a first example here of an actual irrational number that we can see and own for ourselves. Brilliant! In fact, your turn. Write down another example of an irrational number. Isn't this grand?